So he's uh, Vishwa, he's doing Bachelor of Aerospace um, Engineering. I'm learning Hindi. <laughs> so it is pretty expensive when compared to a master's degree, but I would say it is worth it. It's very much well worth it. RMIT has a big, big, you know, collaboration with Boeing. Boeing, as you know, is the biggest name in aviation, aviation industry, industry right yeah, now. It's a RMIT makes it easier to get your PR in other countries while studying aerospace engineering rather than Australia. Hi guys, hi, hello, welcome back to another vlog. This is Catalog with Vishwa in RMIT University. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you? All fine, all fine. And today we are going to discuss about a topic about a video which so many people are asking and probably no one has covered yet, which is Bachelor's of Aerospace Engineering. So At he's RMIT. Yeah. So he's uh, Vishwa. He's doing Bachelor's of Aerospace um, Engineering, and he'll try his best to um, give as much information as you can from a student perspective, yeah. from uh, a, an international student perspective, um, while being in RMIT. And yeah, so that's how it goes. And let's start. Okay. We're not going to talk about this uh, study part first. We'll talk about, we're going to talk about the basic stuff. So the first question is, why Australia? Okay. I wanted to get out of India as fast as I can when I completed <laughs> my high school. I always had that opinion. Uh -huh. um, I really wanted to get into Australia because I thought when you take on major study destinations, it's either USA or UK. But when I discovered Australia, I was like, this is just perfect for me. Yeah. And that's when I discovered RMIT as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the perfect blend for me. I don't like theory. I don't like writing stuff. But RMIT had the perfect option for me in Bachelor of Aerospace Engineering mm -hmm. others. But it is more practical sided. And just Australia in general is just a vibe, you know, rather than you know, really, really, really high study minded Canada or US or UK. Yeah. Australia is just the perfect mix of what you need as a college student, you know. The perfect amount of studies, the perfect amount of, you know, machine learning, the perfect amount of, you know, industry learning and the perfect amount of practical. And, you know, you could get in a little bit of fun here and there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And the weather also resembles India, right? Yeah. The weather really resembles India. But Melbourne, I would say, has the best weather ever because you can't even, you know, guess which, guess which weather it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the best and it's worse in some cases if you're coming from job and then it suddenly starts rain, right? Yeah. But I love the rain. So it's... Oh, yeah. he loves the rain. I love the rain. Yeah. Um, by the way, quickly, it's not a question, it's just, um, where do you belong in India, by the way? Uh, I'm from Chennai, I'm from Chennai. Tamil Nadu, it's a southern, it's a south state south of state. India. Yep. I speak Tamil, English, I'm learning Hindi. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yep. So, just after this question, the next question was or is, why RMIT? Yeah. So, um, when I said that I want to do bachelor's of this aerospace engineering in general, Australia had, didn't have that much of options. I had the RMIT University, I had University of Melbourne, I had uh, University of Adelaide. But when I researched into all these three, I found that RMIT is the best one yet. Because when you compare uh, universities or colleges in India to RMIT or the other colleges in Australia, RMIT is very much different than the universities in India when it comes to like an engineering course, say like aerospace engineering or mechanical engineering. Because you don't focus that much on the theory part, it's more of the practical part of it. Because yeah. you actually get hands-on experience. Even the teaching differs in that way. Because you don't normally get a textbook, you don't, you don't read from a textbook, you don't memorize it and you don't write it. It's a problem-solving environment. Let's say if, uh, I, when I started, this is my second semester actually, when I started my first semester, I have found it really nice that RMIT has this approach to engineers where they give you a problem to solve by the end of the semester and they tell you what you have to do and you have corresponding classes in your labs as well where you work it out, you practice everything so that in the end of the semester, you actually have solved the problem yourself. And you know, it just gives you a more hands-on experience, I would say, and it's a better way of learning. And I found RMIT shining on the start of education rather than University of Melbourne or the other universities. So I really liked RMIT for this. These, yeah. these very reasons. Yeah, these very reasons, yeah. Okay. Um, so, the next question, the, now the basic questions yeah. start. We've got both the courses. So, the first question is affordability. What's the fee structure of this course? Um, since it's a bachelor's course, which I'm doing, it's really expensive to be on a good bachelor's. That's <laughs> true, yeah. yeah. And thanks to my dad for financing it. Thanks, dad. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, annually, you're going to have to pay, let's say, Thirty-three to thirty-four thousand dollars per year. Per year, for yeah. So it's two semesters. Yeah. So each semester it comes out from fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars, and you've got like what 
a grant of other non-tuition fees as well. So when you like finish your entire four year course, which is this is four year course by the way, you would have to pay around three hundred and thirty to three hundred and forty thousand US to, uh, sorry uh, Australian dollars. Yeah, for uh, for just four years in total. This is including all the fees. This is what you get in your um, your uh, offer letter from RMIT if you if you you know get into RMIT. So it is pretty expensive when compared to a master's degree, but I would say it is worth it. It's very much well worth it. People would say like doing bachelors in India is the best option. It is a good option as well, but I, if you want to, you know, get more practical, hands-on approach, you know, you want to actually learn stuff rather than just reading it off a textbook. I would say RMIT and its affordability is approved. It's worth it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next question is how the professors and how the lectures are. Um, so. For the, so you've got around four years. So you've got four years. For the first two years, you're going to be learning your basics of engineering rather than diverging directly into the aerospace part. Yep. So for the first two semesters, you'll actually be learning it around with all the other engineering students like mechanical and say. So your professors are going to be pretty much a common professors, you know. Uh, they are good. They are really nice. They answer questions. If you ask them, they answer everything. Um, it, the one thing I would be concerned about is lecture recycling in the engineering department. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to know, if you want to know what about lecture recycling is, during the COVID times, there was no um, offline classes, right? Yep. So they recorded videos. So um, still now, uh, a couple of the, not all professors, a couple of them are still using those, those videos, videos to teach rather than actually teaching. Um, I wouldn't say it is really utmost first. It is nice, but when comparing to the other teachers who actually take your subject, it is a bit, you know, bad when you consider it. But other than that, the professors are lovely. Yep. If you've got a great program director, Everybody is really lovely. You could go yeah. up to them, any of the professors, any time and ask any questions. You have no worries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, professors are, are really good. Yeah. Okay. And you really want them to just try to um, study so in person. Right? Lecture recycling needs to be stopped. There's some works going on for it. Like, you know, just to stop the um, video part rather than just actually taking the stuff. Um, I think it would be done before 2024 ends. So let's hope for that. Other than that, the Professors are really great. Uh, thank you, by the way. So the next question is, this is the broader question. So if you can just explain and talk about on this better. What's the course structure? What's the course? Okay. Um, so bachelor's of aerospace engineering, you got four years. So um, each year you're going to be doing four main courses, which is your main courses. Those are called the mains. So you'll be doing four main courses all your uh, four years. Um, Armati has three campuses, as you know. So your first two years is going to be in the city campus, and your third and fourth year is going to be in Bandura. Uh, Bandura is also a really great campus. You may have heard about it in our guys' channel before. Um, it's more lab-oriented, engineering-oriented campus. So you'll be spending your third and fourth year in Bandura. Um, when you go to your third and fourth year, that's when you actually split into the aerospace department, where you choose your minors. So these minors are like small courses, but these are the ones that actually decide what your pathway is going to be forward. Rather, if you want to choose, let's say, the aviation industry, or if you want to uh, choose the space industry or something. And we've had great uh, impacts of AI in the course as well. So there's a couple of new minors being introduced where AI is also becoming a subject. So you will be studying basically your first and second year common it's going to be what you guys you know know about engineering the basics and you'll get to the juicy and more interesting part for the third and fourth year in bandura campus so that this is pretty much the close structure so you guys will be doing per semester four subjects and when you get to your third and fourth year you'll be allowed to choose two minors per semester so your subject total count becomes to total six and these minors determine your path forward if you which industry you want to choose that is the co structure. Oh, yeah. Big stuff, man. Yeah, it's big stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. And the next question is what are the future pathways, that, what future roles that come up after doing this course? Uh, so, aerospace engineering, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to fly a plane. It's more on the designing side. Yeah. I know. Uh, it's more on the designing side of anything that, you know, travels. Anything that travels, you know, it can start from your basic cars to even missiles, spacecraft, space shuttles and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the future pathway is what you guys decide on what we want to do. So as I said, in a third year, you'd be deciding either you want to take up, let's say, 
uh, in the aviation side or in the space side where you design, let's say, flies, planes, automobiles and stuff. Or you can either take up missiles, spacecraft, space shuttles, you know. So it's either about being flying horizontally or flying vertically. vertically yeah. yeah, that's going to be it. Yeah. Uh, it, has, it has really great future coming up. If you got, so let's talk from the RMIT perspective. RMIT has a big, big, you know, collaboration with Boeing. Boeing, as you know, is the biggest name in the aviation, aviation industry, industry right, right now. Planes, yeah. RMIT has a great collaboration with them. So um, it is really good. You can start your internship on your third year from RMIT. You, they would hand you over to Boeing as well. Boeing will, you know, train you to work for them. You won't even need to attend classes. You just need to go to the internship. You just need to work for Boeing. And your gr grades will be graded on what work you do in Boeing as well. This is a great opportunity RMIT provides with Boeing. Uh, RMIT has other tie-ups with small aviation uh, aviation plans as well, with small aviation industries as well. RMIT has great ties with the defense sector of Australia as well. But I will explain that later when it comes under PR, because that is a different game. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the future for aerospace engineering. If you study aerospace engineering, you'll be called an aerospace engineer, and you could go to many professions through it. It just depends on what you choose to, you know, follow through. Every different path is going Yes, up. that is it. Yeah. So the next, the last question, which you were talking about, the PR. PR. What's the permanent residence thing? Uh, so the PR in Australia, it is mixed review. Yeah. Um, as I said, the internship with Boeing is really great, but it doesn't get you PR necessarily because Australia ex Boeing, Boeing does the defense contracts mostly for Australia. Makes sense. Defense contracts. And Australia and the Boeing and Australian government doesn't allow non-citizens to get into the defense part. Oh. So it's really tough to get a government slash Boeing job and get the uh, PR. But another great solution is RMIT has tie-ups with Boeing Singapore as well. So if you're not a citizen of Australia, you could work for Boeing Singapore, which allows you to get PR in Singapore. And it allows you to get PR in Australia as well with Boeing, but you won't get per se the defense sector of it. You would possibly get the commercial or private plane sector of Boeing. So you won't necessarily get in the defense sector where you are like a government uh, employee with a security clearance. So you can't do that because you're non you're not a citizen yet. But RMIT has great tie for the Singapore Boeing uh, Boeing wing as well, yep. and RMIT gra like really sends uh, many international students to Singapore to work under Boeing, where it's really easy to get PR in Singapore as well. There are other small aviation industries we have tie ups with the salt as well. We have tie ups with a couple of other defense industries which join mainly you know are not based in Australia. But still, even if you work for them, you could get PR here. Um, it is a typical, it's like a mixed review for PR. So you, it's 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 not easy to get PR here. Yeah. You've got to work your way through Boeing or yeah. you've got to work your way. Yeah, you've got to make other ways. It's a, RMIT makes it easier to get your PR in other countries while studying aerospace engineering rather than Australia. And this is just purely because Boeing is the defense contractor of Australia as well. Yeah. So it's really tough for the you know, Boeing to you know employ non-citizens into their company when it comes to defense projects and defense uh, stuff, you know. But other than that, it's great. You've, you've got more work opportunities, you'll get many internship. And RMIT's uh, aerospace engineering branch, you know, organizes career fairs, career internship every now and then. We've got one coming up as well in the next month, oh. where various, various aerospace tech companies are coming in. They're bringing their representatives. We can talk, we can hand our resumes, we can, you know, talk with them, we can know what we have to do to get our internships placed in them and what to get, you know, a job in their companies, you know. Um, that is purely it for PR. It is a bit tough to get, but it is not impossible. That is what... You just need to take your ways yeah, around yeah, and then yeah. you need to work out. Yes, that is yeah. the thing about PR. Yeah. Yeah. And the Boeing, Boeing uh, thing is in commercial and defense both, right? So Boeing handles uh, commercial as well, but it is not that we can't get in. It's just because Boeing is also the defense provider for Australia. It's like a defense company for Australia, so right? Then you know, better perhaps with defense yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, so that would regulate, like, take out speculations on hiring international students. And Australia has strict rules on like hiring um, yeah. non-citizens into these defense companies. Yep. Uh, any country would but Australia is really strict about it. Mm -hmm. So you would not get per se in the defense sector in Australia, but you could get PR for like commercial and other, you know, stuff for in Boeing in Australia as well. The uh, best option that is being provided is Boeing Singapore, which is a really, really great solution RMIT has provided for international students. You know, all the that is it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, by the way. No. So the last part, it's not a question, it's just a basic yeah. stuff. What's your personal experience about RMIT, Australia, course, anything that you want to share? I really love it, guys. <laughs> it's, it's really, I mean, 
it's it's really great. I love it. We've got great friends. As soon as you make so the key to coming to Australia and you know thriving rather than just surviving is making as many friends as you can. Yeah, yeah, that is it. As many friends as you can, as many connections as you can. It is not just about work or study related. Just having more friends is gonna you know elevate your, your mindset. You, you could just have more fun with it. I personally love RMIT. It is a really really great university to study in. Uh, compared to the Indian universities, uh, every once in a while I talk with my friends back in India. They're suffering. I'm over here attending parties, attending <laughs> interviews with my man. <laughs> yeah, um, if you are uh, coming from India, you are in safe hands as well. There's literally, literally tons of Indians over here, and there's no such thing that is threat to students here. Melbourne is the most welcoming uh, city of Australia of the world, I would say, and Arabati is really, really great. RMIT, you know, provides various supports for the international students and stuff. You know, it's really great. Yep. And if you're specifically coming from India, make make sure you join the Indian club as well. Yep. Yeah. That is where you get the most then fun. Then always I, I say yeah. the same thing. And even if you're not from India, you can still join. Yeah, you can still join you can still the Indian club. Yeah. Sure. So, this was Vishwa. Yeah. Thank you, Vishwa, for coming and no, answering all the questions. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, and I'm mentioning Vishwa's Instagram here. Yeah. If you have any questions, please, you can just text him, text him and please, whenever you get time, yeah. please make I'll, sure to reply I'll, to them. I'm on Instagram 24 7 so you guys don't have to worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, whenever you get time, you can just come back to the same video yes. and answer to the comments if you get yeah, something. Yeah, for sure. And my Instagram is also in the uh, description if you have any questions or anything that you want to ask or make like suggestions or want any video on any other topic, just let me know or in the comment section. Caps lock, Vishwa. Vishwa. Signing off from nice RMIT. Like, share and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Bye.